Amen. We don't want to fall by the wayside. Many are falling by the wayside. The wayside. And I just pray that Lord just help me to stand. Yes, Lord. Help me to wait on you. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They yes. shall mount up wings as equal. They yes. shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yes. They will not give up. They will still hold on because guess what? They waiting patiently on the Lord. Yes. Patiently, he said, wait on the Lord. Yes, indeed. Can I get a witness here? Yes. And with the fruit of patience, you develop your character in God. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Don't be so quick and, and fast to try to and haste to get there. Except your house and burn down, you get out. You don't have to ask nobody, should I leave? Should I go or should I stay? You get on out of there. Amen. That's the commonality of the human mind that, you know, it's common that if something is on fire, and you in the midst, so you get on out of the way. You don't have, you don't need nobody to tell you to move or go. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. And I guarantee with the patient, you will find yourself uh, doing many, many things, and you will find the um, everything is much better. And also with you, so when troubles comes and situation comes and circumstances and problems and conditions come and do arrive, you will be. Hey, yes. You won't faint from it. That's Amen. right. That's right. Amen. Amen. We don't want to start leaving here before time. Mark chapter ten. We're gonna uh, we got a message today um, that from Mark ten and uh, beginning with verse. Um, This morning, we're well, early this morning. I'll be here early this morning. Yes. Amen. And, uh, Amen. To bring this up again and the things that we put in. And I'm telling you, so much spirit of the form of the view um, in us. And um, all we have to do is just um, take the time to really hear. He that had an ear, let him hear. Yes. What the Spirit saying to the churches. Amen. We realize that this is when we give our undivided attention to hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. We all have ears, but we all don't hear. All have eyes, and we all don't see. Can I get a witness? Amen. As Jesus began to let the disciples know, you have eyes, and you see, and you have ears, and you can hear. Amen. You got to be in the way of the Lord. Okay, Mark 10, chapter 17, and it talks about one uh, one story in particular. And uh, we, we need to hear this. And we have, I've, I've preached on this before. I preached, but the, the revelation that in here and the insight that this is over. Oh man. So, uh, how can I say it? So astounding that um, to the way that uh, uh, it, it's just about how God can take, um, He can take the same word and allow the uh, more and more things to come out of it that we can even we can even imagine. Amen. And 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 here, verse seventeen. Are y'all with me? Yes. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came running one running. Just talking about this. Uh, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, "Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life?" And that was a good question, and very powerful question, because the one. He wanted to know, but did he really want to know? I mean, there are sometimes we ask questions about certain things, and and we want uh, the answer to be what we uh, uh, want it to be instead of the real answer and the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we see it as going a different way, we begin to turn away from the truth. We want to uh, grab those and teach, heap up teachers. Let me go to Timothy. We want to heap up teachers with itching ears to give up to us the things that we really 
one here. Amen. And then we begin to, but I like them very good. We can like them good. Amen. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, is there anything you need? <laughs> I like them already. Uh. He's talking down my line. He's in my game now. We can really work this out together. But then there's the real answer and the truth. Amen. In order to search to see whether we are and we uh, coincide with it or we incline with it to give us blessed assurance to, that we have the real answer in order to bring about the right and real solution. Are y'all still with me? Mm -hmm. So, so here it is now. And here it is. Uh, and when he was gone forth, when Jesus was gone forth, in other words, into the way, there came one running to him. He came running to him and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Verse 18 said, And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Amen. Amen. There is none good but one. That is God. Mm. Amen. And he's answering him all along, but the uh, rich young ruler probably, you know, he, he he might be astonished at this point because he likes saying, I ask how what must I do? What shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus asked again. Verse 18 said, Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. He said, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered, this is what the rich young ruler answered. The one answer that came running behind you. Verse 20, and he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Y'all hear this? Yes. He told Jesus, said, the commandments that you just gave unto me, I've kept them, in other words, I've observed these uh, from my youth. In other words, can you see him right now? He thinks he's on his way. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Let's read on a little further. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, one thing thou lackest. See, see, one would give you the real thing when they love you, and they want you to go the right way and take to get the right answer and do the right thing. Mm -hmm. This is someone who really loves you. Amen. Amen. Not someone that's trying to tickle your fancy or to make friends with you in a sense that make you feel good when they know the things that you really need and that is a, a necessity for your life. This is somebody who really, really loves you, genuinely mm -hmm. loves you mm -hmm. to give you that which is going to help you That's right. because you That's really right. need this in order to make it in. You ask him a question, he's leading you now with nothing but truth and yes. answers. Yes. Are y'all still with me? Not just because uh, uh, he didn't want to offend him, not just because that, well, if I say this, He's not going to listen to me anymore. Not just because that he may cut himself off from me if I don't give him, if I give him the truth. And so, well, let me kind of water it down a little bit or let me sugarcoat it just a little bit to keep my relationship, but he keep his relationship with me. Because if I can do that, because if I give him the whole truth, nothing but the truth, uh, so uh -huh. help me God. All right now. He just might cut himself off from me. No, that ain't what Jesus did. Because he loves him. Are y'all still with me? Because he loved him. Yes. Yes. Gave him the truth. It is. Amen. And he answered and said unto him, Master, I'm going over again. All these have I observed for my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Mm -hmm. And said unto him, gave him the truth. Watch this. One thing thou lackest. Go thy way. Now watch this. Your neighbor said, this is on a test. Mm -hmm. 
This is only a test. Sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Are y'all listening? All right. Watch this. One thing Jesus said to him, thou lackest, go thy way, right? Sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Now, you were looking to be where? In heaven, right? Amen. That was some good, good word right there. Right by seven, look. And come, Jesus said, take up the cross and follow me. Oh, in other words, all burdens to be bad. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Watch this. Jesus gave him something. This was a test to him. Jesus, a test to give him the test that he may check himself. Uh -oh. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Jesus gave parables. Jesus gave uh, uh, answers, and uh, uh, um, how can I say it? It was in a indirect yet direct way, but you missed it because it was given in parables, and you like, wow, why can't he just come straight out? He wants you to see, amen, it for yourself. Sure. Are y'all still with me? Uh-huh. So it was taken in a manner, number one, if you really want the answer, if you really want the truth, then you would have the patience to wait on. Oh, uh, yes. One thing is going to be to check your patience. Because that's a fruit. That's it's a fruit. One of the fruit of the Spirit, uh huh. Mind you that he said that these commandments he kept Amen. from his youth up. Amen. He kept, and he said he kept. If he kept the commandments, the only way you can keep them is only through and by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can't keep them on your own. You can't even say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. But I can say it. Uh, well, you can say it, but it don't. It, it's, it, it's not real. Amen. Amen. No, through and only to him I don't say. So I says he said, "Mind you, he told Jesus, these I've kept." He felt good at that moment. But here it is, Jesus told him, "One thing thou lackest, go go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me." Yes. Watch this, verse twenty-two, and he was sad, sad. Jesus has told him that you will receive heaven. Did he ask the question, what shall I do to inherit? <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Look at the name and say, what shall I give? What shall I give? What shall I give? <laughs> what shall I give? And watch this. And uh, why watch this? For just a few moments. Mm. <laughs> Because guess what? It's only momentarily, momentarily that you give because all that you give unto the Lord, you shall receive back. Don't worry about that. You shall receive back. Not only just that, but manifoldly Man. shall he give back, back to, to you. you. Uh -huh. And plus eternal life. life. Uh -huh. Yes. This was only to develop your trust your reliance and your dependence and, 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 and belief in him. Yes. Amen. Amen. So you have to trust him, what he said to you in order, and you must do according to what he tells you in order, because this is what constitutes faith. And then with that, you shall, whatever you give up for Christ, you shall receive back manifoldly Plus, to get the bonus, eternal life. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Are y'all still with me? Yes. Y'all can be seated. Y'all can be seated. Plus, eternal life. Are y'all getting it? Amen. The question he asks, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? 
Jesus just gave him the answer. Amen. Now, what everyone has to do that we all have to give up everything for Christ. And no one gives up everything for Christ that shall not receive it back. Listen to me. You will get it back. But not only just what you have given of that measure, but look at the measure of increase and bountiful measure that implies that you shall receive it manifoldly. Uh -huh. Much more than what you have given. Amen. Children, give them to the Lord. You got a wife, give her to the Lord. Yes. You got a husband, give him to the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Whatever you have, or you have, give it to the Lord. This will develop your faith because you're trusting now him with it. Amen. You can't say you trust God if you're still holding to him. And he asked you to give it. Now, why was this man tested with that particular thing? Because you will see why. See, everybody not. <laughs> All right. Yeah, are y'all still with me? So they don't have to be tested with the same thing. That's right. Amen. This man may have been one that was a non-giver. Okay. I don't know, but he was tested in the sense of giving it up. Amen. Mm -hmm. If he was a giver, he wouldn't have been tested in that way. Right. I don't believe that would be that wouldn't have been relevant to test him in a way that he's already done. Right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Y'all better hear this. You will be tested with something that you are so attached to. Watch this. Or conformed to or with. That will be your test because the reason why and the reason being is only because that you shall detach yourself from it and have it and don't allow it to have you. That's right. But I'm not uh, uh, attached to that, okay? Then can you give it up? Can you give it away? <laughs> well, uh, okay, then it has a hold on you. So you will be tested that whatever your stronghold may be in your life, that thing, everybody's not tested with the same thing. God allow his product to be tested that's why everything should be shaken. Mm -hmm. In heaven, also in earth. In earth, also in heaven. Mm -hmm. One more, once more, he should shake it. Yes. Yes. To make sure that everything that falls off, mm -hmm. you know what you got to do. You got to get it, pick it up, in other words. Let me put it this way, because if you saw it using terms and words like get it right, see, that it go just me again. Well, if it falls off and you need it, then you know that you had to get it up, pick it up, and put it back on. And at this time, you get it on right. That's right. And so when it's shaking, nothing falls off. Just to remind you that nothing that is holy and spiritual from heaven shall be shaken and fall. None of that can be shaken off. You have to walk away or denounce yourself from it. After you have tasted, you've seen, you have tasted, you have an intimacy, an intimate relationship, and the intimacy that you have is with God, then here it is. After you have all of this with the Lord and you walk away from it, denounce yourself, it becomes an apostasy. 
you turn, you don't want it no more. Only try to turn back to it and can't be saved. Searching your heart with tears, Esau, and couldn't find in your heart to repent. Amen. Amen. But here it was that now he had, mind you, he ran and he ran Jesus down, in other words, didn't he? Mm-hmm. And he went for him. Jesus went for him. He came, there came one running and kneeled to him. He kneeled right, kneeled right down. And he asked him, good master, Jesus, first of all, without him, and I know why I call it me good. There's none good but one. And, and um, that was saying something already, and that is God. Thou knowest the commandments that Jesus said to him, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal. And all these commandments were given here was that this guy, he was sure. He was uh, sure that he was okay on the end there. He answered and said to him, Master, all these have I observed. He observed them. Well, he didn't say keep. He said observed, didn't he? He said, I observed from my youth. Yes, living and taking hold to it and keeping it and applying it and walking therein. Amen. Yes. He said, I observed it. And Jesus uh, says this to him that one thing I lack is going to sell what I have. Give to the poor. In other words, okay, here was, look, he was sad, the Bible said in verse 22. And he was sad at the same and went away grieved, for he had great possession. That's why. You got a hundred dollars, you can easily part from that. Okay, take it. I give this up. You got a thousand, you kind of think about it a little bit, you kind of hesitate with giving that up. You got 10,000. Hmm. Seems like the more you get, the, the more you want to hold on to it. Yeah. Wow. If you got $10, you get better easy. You got $100, well, yeah, no problem. No problem. <laughs> now I'm going up now, man, I know zero. Now you got $1,000. Oh, man. 10% of do it this time. Now you got $10,000. You got to give up $1,000. Right? I, I give part of it. See, then you don't got away from your tithe. Mm. It's not about tithing. This is not, tithing belongs to God. All that belongs to God. This is only for us. It's not for God. It is it's going to God because this is what he commanded in order to get us in the faith place of the word. Yes. That's all it is. God don't need nothing. Everything belongs to him. Yeah. God has talents on a thousand years. And guess what? I'm crazy enough to believe one of those are mine. I don't know about you, but I'm just that crazy to believe it. Amen. The earth is Lord's for the other one that the bread ain't all belongs to God. So guess what? I'm just crazy enough to believe every bit of that. And I believe that by me being an heir of God and, 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 and a son by a uh, little being adopted into the family, into the fold of God, then guess what? All that my father has belongs to me too. I'm just crazy enough to believe it. And just by doing so, guess what? It's been working out. Amen. Amen. The devil ain't gonna give you nothing but hell. Amen. Are y'all still with me? That's all he has to offer. His job is to steal, kill, and to the destroy. So that's all he's gonna give you. He will try to lure you with things. Yeah. On this earth, because he knows that all is gonna pass away. He knows that's right, he's on a temporary anyway. So I can offer you that. He can give you thousands and thousands and thousands. But guess what? You have to sell your soul. You have to give him something in return. Amen? Are y'all still with you? So God allowed that to happen so that we can be checked. And we can check ourselves to see where we are. Are we conformed? Are we with God? Are we conformed to this world? Or has we been transformed by the renewing of our mind to learn the things of God? Are y'all still with me? Yes. And again, as zero began to add to what we have, then we get a little closer to it and conform to it even tighter. We did good when we were down with the hundred dollars. I can do it. I can do it. 
Now you was tested with the 10,000. I'll give part of it now. You done stop the 10%. You done stop the how she just offerings now. Nothing but offerings. Now. And we know what the word says. So you don't stop. And don't let another zero add to it. How many of you know it's not that hard to get a hundred thousand dollars? It's all depending on you. It all depends on who you get the answer, who who leads you and guides you. Amen. Amen. God given us power to get wealth. To get wealth. Y'all wanna hear this? Yes. God gives us power to get wealth. Yes, it is God that gives us the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding. It is God that blesses whatever we touch and all that we set our hands to do. Yes. God blesses it and causes it to prosper. You can take something that people look at and you, I can look at it and say, look, that ain't worth nothing but ten dollars. God can bless it and here and you take it over here and somebody see it as ten thousand dollars. Gotta know it. Yes, sir. And you're looking at it and saying, Yes, sir. It, it didn't really. I mean, it was given to me. God, when God put his hands on it, uh -huh. amen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can take a picture abstract and, and you can take anything and just put X's and O's and everything else on that picture and paint it up there on the canvas and guess what happened? It's sitting up there and somebody, a millionaire, can come in there and look at it. I gave you ten thousand dollars for that that piece right there. <laughs> God can touch it uh -huh. and make it out of whatever He wanted to be. Yes. That everything that you set that hand to do, God can bless it and cause it to prosper. And you worry about how hard it is for me to get this or that. Trust God. So here it is that now all of a sudden then, this one, he run Jesus down. Asking of course, now in 22 now he's sad. And he was sad at the same. He was okay until Jesus gave all this. As a lot of people come and they hear a word and when it comes to a certain thing they get sad. And they go away grieved. For he had great possessions. You ever know people that you are writing to, uh, um, as the old folks say, step on the toes. And, and, that's, and it's not really stepping in what it is. It's just it's something that's, that you need to hear that, that God is saying to you, okay, get it right. Because guess what? It's going to take that. And, uh, and there are some things we all need to come clean with. And, and all we, once we come clean, we feel so much. We got so much peace and joy. And we got everything we need now because guess what? It was that that was burning, that had us burned down. And it gives us headaches. It gives us, oh my goodness. It just tears us all to pieces. We nervous sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we need the shaking sometimes when it, when it runs off. Don't you know that you're not supposed to live like that? Don't you know you're supposed to have the peace of God? Yes. And you, don't yes. you know you ought to be able to rest because God gives his children rest? But it's that particular thing that you are holding on to, don't want to hold on to, and don't want to get rid of it, don't want God to deliver you from it. It's holding you down, burning down, and you can't rest. You're tossing, you're turning, and your blood pressure shot straight up and all and going crazy in there. Everything is not uh, uh, regulated like it should be, and it causes you to go into a physical uh, reaction. In other words, strokes and heart attacks and everything else that come with the development of your stressful uh, uh, means in life because you need to get rid of it before it get rid of you. That's a message all within itself. We'll hold on to things that's really taking us out of here. Mm. Some people can't stand to have a certain extreme amount of anything. <laughs> it will overwhelm them. It will take them out of here, overtake them. It will cause them to lose everything that they have learned or either getting in the law. It will cause them to say bye-bye. He turned away. Grief. He was sad because he had great possession. Amen. Now, I'm choosing for a, a, a subject here. Now, watch this. To hear him say, watch this. He was brought up in the Word. 
but he was caught up. He got caught up in the world. All right now. Are y'all still with me? Mind you that the word of God lets us know. Watch this. Everybody say word. You can write it down too. Write W-O-R-D down. That's good. When you're caught up in the word. When you're brought up in it. In the word. Mind you say he observed these from his youth. Uh, he was brought up in the word, right? But something happened and he got caught up. Yeah. In the world. Because he made a change. He began to do what the word of God told him not to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He began to add to the word. Y'all missing this. He added to the word by inserting the L mm -hmm. and made a world. Y'all can't say that. That's revelation all within itself. Right. He put the L in word. Y'all write that down. You, he started out, he did good because he was brought up in the W-O-R-K. I mean, R-D. W-O-R-D. And by living and so things coming so frequent, I guess, I don't know how frequent or how rapid it came to him and how quickly he got or how he developed or however, whatever, that it got a hold of him that he placed an L in between the R and the D in word. Mm -hmm. And it made it world. Mm -hmm. He got caught up in that. Man. Hmm. They made it in a sense to y'all. Yes. What could that hell mean? Yes. Let's go to <laughs> First John and Lies. two and sixteen. Brother Bay, read that for me. First John two and sixteen. We're gonna see when we break this thing down. I, I was up all night with this right here. Y'all gonna be up just a little bit. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Two and six. Read that out loud. I think that's where I am. Let me, let me make sure I need to get there. I don't want to mess this thing up. All day is in the world. Amen. All day. All that is in the world. Read that. Read it. Read it out. All that is in the world. It's what? The lust of the flesh. Everybody say lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. And the pride of life. You see those twelve that have lust of the flesh? Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, of the eyes. The pride of life, right? He took this L. I'm just using this. I'm not saying he really actually took the L, but he he he's got conformed to the world, so the L was put in the word mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. to change it. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. L with the lust. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. Then became prideful, the pride of life. Read that again. All that is in the world. For all that is in the world. Wait a minute. For all that is in the world. Y'all hear this? That's what's in the world. Mm -hmm. All that is in the world is the what? The lust of the, the lust of the flesh. Uh -huh. And the lust of the eyes. And the and the pride of life. Now read the rest of the part. It ain't gonna inherit. It ain't gonna inherit. It's not of the father. But it's of the world. It's not of the Father. It's not of God. It's of the who? The world. The world. W O R L D. Huh? Now you see where this revelation comes from. W O R L D. World. Somehow, I'm saying this is me talking. He took the L of the world and put it into word. See, he was dealing with the word first because Jesus saw this man. He said, I have a very mixed mind. You thought. All right, that's word, right? Everybody say word up. Word up. Oh, we coming on down there. <laughs> word up. Word up. He had that. In other words, he probably said, yes, word up. Okay. Amen? Yeah. But as Jesus continued to tell him what to do, then all of a sudden in verse 22, he became sad. Because guess what? He had great possession. If you only had a hundred dollars, oh sure, I'll take this. 
Yeah, I'll get a thousand dollars for you. He said, I can know next week I can start and I can do this, I can do that. And I said, won't take me a little couple of days. I can get that thousand dollars. Okay, take this. Ten thousand dollars. Here it is. Man, it'll take me a long time to get that ten. It took me at least six months to get ten dollars. Um, hmm. Maybe um, I get half of it. <laughs> See the change, y'all? Mm -hmm. See, you start changing. Change. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Watch this. And when it became, I said 10,000, when it became 100,000 and zero, that's all Donald Trump did. Huh? He's living fancy where he's and zeros. That's all you got. Why you can see your truth now? All right, no, no, I'm just talking, y'all. Yeah. Pray for, pray for him. He got a soul to. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I am on Facebook, right? Government gonna check that out too. Well, y'all check that out from. Um, he just has heroes. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can be whatever you want to be in your own little corner, your own little chair. You can be whatever you can get on any island you want to be on. But guess what? Reality gonna kick in. Sooner or later, reality is going to kick in. Mm -hmm. And the real deal mm -hmm. is going to appear. Amen. So now it's becoming complicated. No, it's not becoming complicated. It already has become complicated because now I got great possessions. I got a high thought. Okay, well, 10% of 100,000. Right? Ain't that 10,000? Did I do it right? $10, right? Amen. Now it's becoming complicated for you because you don't want to give up no $10. The greater you have, the less you want to give up. I don't know if the story is true or not, but it was told that this man was on a job and uh, he was making uh, a certain amount of money. And he was doing good in church. He was tithing and giving tithes and he was giving offers and everything. On Got a raise and it boosted up a little bit. He starts slacking up on tithing and giving offerings. And, and this is not about money because I know what's going on there because everybody there, they even want you to think it's all about money so it can deter it will cause people now faith to start wondering because mm -hmm, everything is being disposed. There's a lot of crooks out there anyway. There's a lot of people that have fallen out of the way. The old people that all they were getting for. They started out well, but guess what happened? They got to a place and now they have fallen out of the wayside. So it's not about money because all money, all that belongs to God. It's all about kingdom business. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, so don't don't get crossed up with that. The enemy, uh, God is allowing the enemy to go through just to just to, uh, uh, um, the 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 see that we as saints and children of God will hold to our faith and trust God. And guess what? News that you can't stand and you can't handle, turn it off. You ain't ready for it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't let all this other stuff mess you up because God is not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. And he definitely does all things decent and order. So all this stuff and all this exposés and all the explosions and all this opening and all this stuff that being brought out, I think some of the, sometimes that the people that's involved in bringing all this out in a in a loud voice and an outburst, there's something that's not right with them. Trust me. Because number one, if you in the Christian manner, you have a brethren who have fallen into a fault. Now, why? This is a Christian manner. What God teaches. If you have a brethren who have fallen into a fault, you that are spirit to go to him in the spirit of meekness right. to restore him, not to destroy him. That's right. Are y'all still with me? That's You're, right. And then what did the, the, the word change on? So now we're talking about the real person. We're talking about the true brothers and sisters in Christ. We're talking about the ones who have love and compassion. We're talking about the passionate ones. We're not talking about the passive ones either. I didn't say passive. I said passion. We got a lot of passive that takes anything, whatever we go, whatever you say, it'll be all right. You got to leave us like that. And that's the wrong way. I'm just saying this because we need to step up. I'm like wondering at times, but I'm not going to mess with that. But we do have those, yes, that where, where is your love that you are to try to restore? That's right. Let me go to my brother. Let me talk with my brother. Let me see, can I reach my brother? Now, if he refuses you, you take back. You know how the order is in the church of God. This is God's church. You go to order. So if you don't want to listen, you take, you 
take witnesses with you. Then he refused. Take the church. I mean, why can't we follow orders? Because there's something wrong with um, uh, And I'm saying, because this is written in the word of God too. There's got to be something bound to be wrong with you. Especially when you do it with contention. So stop following all the stuff that one is outburst. Yes, it could be true. And they would, the Pharisees take you and hammer you with the word of God. The word of God hammers all by itself. They don't need nobody to add or take away from it. People are uh, preaching and teaching with contention because guess what? They are looking for an argument or a debate. Amen. Are y'all still with me? Yes, the question would be, where's the love? That was a that was a message on the other week. Where's the love? And show you need to show some. Amen. Amen. Because guess what? That still don't discontinue or the opportunity for you to repent. Mm -hmm. You will love the person to go ahead and die and be destroyed, but that's not why Christ came. The person still has an opportunity to do what? Repent. Mm -hmm. Even Esau, when he sold his birthright, God gave him space to repent. It was Esau himself that couldn't find it. He searched his heart with tears, and he could not find it in his heart because his heart was so hard according to the things that were opposite and contrary to the will of God and the will of God that he could not find no longer in his heart to repent. That was on Esau. God did not cause him not to repent. He gave him space to repent and to come openly to repent. So now, whatever you have been through, whatever spills you have made, whatever you have done, and this is not right here, trying to condone any of this, this is letting you know you have an opportunity and a boss and you have blood still running warm that you can repent. Are y'all still with me? If I'm preaching a ser sermon, then I'm gonna give the whole thing. Yes, if you have fallen into a fault, I'm here to try to restore you, right? That's what the that word said. So restore you, I will remind you that guess what? Repent of this. Right? God is a faithful and forgiving God. And get it right with God. I'm not telling you to go get back in a place to where you have made big spills at, because you may need some, yeah. You you need some counsel. Uh, counseling yourself, you know, to get back to that place where you were so high that you Amen. fell down so far. Amen. But God still is faithful. Yes. God still is loving. God still is gracious. God still is merciful. That he gives you a chance and space for you to repent. Everybody, if I'm not giving you the whole truth, then I don't need to give, try to give you any of it. Because that is the way out and Jesus is that way. He's the way, the truth, and he's the life. Yes. That's why he came. He didn't come to condemn, he came to save. Yes. Now, if you miss out on what and refrain from what he has given and the opportunity he's given unto you, the salvation of salvation, then that's totally up to you. Yes. Not up to me to condemn or not up for me to destroy you and kick you and keep kicking you and keep, that's not love. I would do that only because there's something that's not right within me. And it, it can't be the love of Christ is right in me because he came into a whole world of sin of nothing but sinners that did everything that they was big enough to do or could do or ever, ever will do. Mm -hmm. So it can't be the Christ in me that's attacking in that way. The Christ in me will be trying to get you to get it right and repent of it in order, in order that we go to heaven. Yeah, but I don't want you to repent so you can go to a place that you don't want to go. Well, I'm not saying one, whatever you choose. That's the word of God. Are y'all still with me? Mm -hmm. Being brought up in the word, and this is what happened in the word, brought up in it. If not careful, you can get caught up in the world by making changes and putting the L in word to make it world. And then it will cause you to turn and deviate from the thing slowly but surely. Deviate from the things of God. I want you to see this, rich young ruler. The Bible said, sad he went, and let's read this. Let's go over this again. He was, and he turned around. He was doing good up until this point 22, verse 22. And he was sad at the saying. He was sad at the preaching. He was sad at the word. And went away, grieved. He went away. He went away. For he had great possessions. This is what happened. He had great possession. He had 
great possessions. Amen. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Hand. The reason this past sense, right? It becomes hand when you have to leave it back here. Because <laughs> you no longer what? Yeah. He had great possession. Whatever the Lord had placed in my possession and allowed me to have and to use while I'm still here, if he were to take me home today, all of that would be what? Left back here. <laughs> I had while I was here. Debt. But this is just temporary. Y'all get it? Now when I get to heaven, now I have heaven. Let's go have heaven before you get to heaven. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because you're seeking those things what? You're seeking oh, those things wow. above and not on this earth. Uh -huh. You said your affection, where Christ said on the right hand of the Father, you're setting your affection on things above and not on this earth. Are y'all still with me? Yes. Amen. 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 So you're already experiencing some heaven. The kingdom of God is within, it's within you. So you are also experiencing right now, so therefore it's not a, it's not a big thing to do what the Lord asks you to do. Because you shall receive that back manifold, you hear me now, and plus eternal life. Are you? Do you trust him? Amen? So, the rich gentleman, he was brought up in the word. Now, yeah. but he was caught up in the world. Can I get a witness? Amen. And it was the lust of the flesh. It was the lust of the eyes. And the pride of life that caused him to turn away. Can I get a witness here? Do you not know that the word of God cannot be added to nor taken away? When his word and guess what happened? Why are you trying to add to it? He added to the word. By placing in the L and made it, he transformed the word into world. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. All right. And he began to start serving. Nothing is to be added, nor nothing is to be taken away. Are y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Stop trying to change things and make it your way because this is how you want it to be. Stop adding to the world. And stop trying to take away from it because guess what? You're only bringing more and more. Yeah, you will bring some grief to you. Amen. Can I get a witness? So here was that he had great possession, and Jesus looked around about and said to his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And I think this example that Jesus gave here explains why. He got caught up in the world. And I say this. In closing, there are so many that's gotten caught up in the world that they sold S O L V. They sold S O U L. They sold their soul. There was somebody that wanted it just that bad. That's what lust is to have an ardent want. Great want, desire to have it. I just got to have it. I don't care what it takes. If I just get it for one day, I'll be all right. If I look, I'll live the rest of my eternal life in hell just for it. Oh, wow. And you know that's bad when you sell out your soul. Man. But they doing it. They doing it. And for much of nothing. <laughs> Come on now. You don't think it's much of nothing? Can, can I just get really real about this, biblically? Esau sold his for a bowl of <laughs> lentils, lentil soup, whatever it was. <laughs> wow. Much of nothing. You get $100,000. I keep saying that. You get a hundred thousand dollars 
and you think you are rich, I'm here to tell you, I'm already rich. Come on. Jesus. I'm enriched with love. Yes. With joy. Yes. Enriched with peace. Yes. Patience. Yes. Enriched with meekness. Ooh, yes. Temperance. Great. Enriched with faith. Come on now. Gentleness. Come on. Can I get a witness here? Come on. Enriched with kindness. You preach in. Can I get a witness here? Yes. Enriched with the Holy Spirit. Yes. With the Holy Ghost. Come on. Somebody shout yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That's two hundred thousand dollars. That ain't no money. You know, quite sure some guy there is still trying to get more and more and more and, and more, more and more. more. And, more. and they're gonna break themselves down. They ain't gonna never enjoy. Cause guess what? After they get to the place, okay, now I'm gonna settle now and enjoy. Now it's time to go. Uh, mm. Somebody else gonna blow it. Why are you making? Money. You can't serve two masters. That's right. That's right. That's right. You can't serve God That's and right. mammon. He did people don't want to take the breaks or take the uh, the rest that God has given them. They want to keep one out the more if they broke down, they're still trying to get it. They still trying for what? Jesus. Please sit down, rest a while, and give God glory and watch the blessings of God that you can continue to praise him and lift him up. That's your blessing. All that God gives unto you, he gives unto you the fruit of your labor that you may enjoy and rejoice with it. Not to see how much you can compound or to with the compilation of gathering how much I can get because you don't know how much time they got left here. That's right, that's right. But he enjoy life while you got it. That's right, that's right, that's right. Right. You're going to take a trip to him just to explore, to see the beauty of God's creation. Do so. You may turn around and let somebody have it. It's going to consume it all in one day. When you could have enjoyed enjoy the rest of your life with what God blessed you with. That's right. Enjoy the fruit of your labor, for it is a gift. This from is what God. the word of God said. It is a gift from, from God. God. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank you don't know who you're going to leave something back here to. Or if you leave it back here to them, you don't know who they're going to allow to blow it up for you. Amen. You don't. Well. All of this revising and plotting and setting up and saying I'm leaving this back here for them. And you are lessening the living of your life, not learning how to live. Mm -hmm. And gonna leave it back here for somebody that they get caught up with. Somebody else is gonna take it all in one hour. All that you really, really worked hard and struggled to get and didn't enjoy. Somebody comes in with somebody that's, that you love and they get connected with that person and takes everything they got that you work hard for. I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm just trying to get you to live your life and stop making debt it have control over you, but you have control over it. Right. And that you have a joyous and, and rejoicing life because God has given it to you for, uh, uh, it was a gift from God. Yes. And he gave it to you to enjoy. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Sometimes you can choose and have favor of somebody so much that you want them to have everything. And God said, you can't figure that out. Because you don't know who they're going to get caught up with. Amen. It happens. 
God forbid it can be a young lady, right? Beautiful young lady brought up in the word and can, like him, get caught up in the world. Mm -hmm. Are y'all still with me? Yes. That's what this message is saying. You can be brought up in the word. You can observe the word. The commandments of God from youth up, brought up in it. But you got caught up in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and reason being because there was something that you had a great desire. You just got to have it. I don't care what it takes. I got to have him. I got to have her. I got to have it. Y'all better hear me on this. It ain't worth your soul. The only valuable thing about you is your soul. And the enemy using anything to use anybody That's right. to rob you of your soul. There are people that selling out like hot cakes being given in a pancake supper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> there are some that hear a message like this because we're Facebook Live, and they'll go and do the very thing that the Lord asked them not to do. Ooh. They'll walk right out. Mm. And go do it anyhow, because mm. that's how bad it got a hold on you. On oh, you, you better listen. You don't need nothing to have a hold on you except for the Holy Spirit. Yes, thank you, Lord. Not things of this life, not thank things you, of this world, not thank anything you, physical to have a hold on you. Thank because you, if it got a hold on you, it's controlling you. That's right. You're afraid of it. Mm. You got money you don't want to spend it on because they got you. Amen. You think you got it, but no, it got you because yeah. guess what? It's controlling you. I just say go get loose and get foolish with it and just go foolish and all. No, but end your life. Please do. And I guarantee you will rest. Definitely rest assured. Assured that everything will be all right, that God yes. gives us peace. Yes. He gives yes. us rest and sleep, sweet sleep. All right. You don't have to worry about this or worry about nothing. Mm. Don't worry about what you should eat or wear what you should put on. You don't have to carry yourself being burdened with all of this on your shoulders. It's only whatever you take on in life Thank that you. brings you down physically and cause you to live a short life. Jesus. Y'all better hear this. And sting your life with wisdom from Proverbs. And enjoy the riches from Proverbs. Amen. She will tell you. But if you reject the wisdom and the sayings of Proverbs, when at your time of calamity, she will begin to ignore you and will not hear you when you need some answers, some real answers. Yes. Because you rejected her. You rejected her. You didn't want to hear it. You just don't want to know. Mm. Can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. Brought up in the word, but caught up in the world. In the world. It's controlling you. Let nobody fool you. Amen. Amen. Don't let looks fool you. Mm. I'm speaking to my men there. Don't let them little high parts and stuff fool you. Them <laughs> high parts. Don't let it fool you. Oops. Oops. I'm talking to my women. Don't let these men all buffed up and all uh, masculine and, and all buffed up, puffed up and all that stuff in that flesh because they're going Man. down too. You don't think it's going down? Look at all sweat, sweat snake in there. Yeah. You look kind of funny there, ain't you? Uh huh. You look kind of funny there. Look kind of funny. See, he was back there during the day. He he really put a lot of work into his craft and who he made and shaped himself to be. Yeah, man. See, you get older. Them sales, them sales. You get new sales every day, but guess what happens? They're still reproducing over and over. And after a certain time of uh, reproduction, and everything's never beginning to start turning down because your, your shape, your form is all because of the cells that you have in your body. Man. Yeah. Jaws get a little thinner. Yeah. Eyes get a little weaker. Dull. Uh, I mean, you can't say I, I had to use a uh, reader by readers. Y'all see me put them on every once in a while. I don't have the sight I used to have them get older. It's a good thing though, because all of this comes, all of this comes. It comes because guess what? This flesh was not meant to live forever. It's going back from when you came. Can I get a witness here? Yes. Don't let this little stuff fool you. 
Yeah, we old men want to grab a young woman. And then here, but watch this. And what do you think they're going to do when you start uh, uh, getting uh, disabled? <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. yeah. What do you think they're going to do then? You're in a wheelchair and they want to go and have some fun. <laughs> right. And guess what? You get mad at you too and pop your jaw, you get to saying something. Because what can you do? Uh -huh. Can I just be real? Because see, there's some people just don't like to be real. This is real life stuff. Watch this. This is real life stuff coming from a real preacher. Amen. I'm here to tell you I'm not the preacher. <laughs> God is. Y'all ready to hear this? Amen. 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 Why are you going to sit there and fool yourself? Amen. Amen. All the things that the young one want to do, you can't do. And now you think that you're going to tag along with it. Please. What do you think? Come on now. <laughs> See, I'm waking somebody up. Somebody, man, guess what they're doing? Just like this rich young ruler. They turn away sadly and they're grieving now because they don't, they got great possession in them. They got great highly possession in them. They don't want to hear that. I never hear them no more. Oh, you come back again, Facebook. You're going to sneak and do it. But you're going to come back. You want to see what's, what's being said. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what is this he saying? Amen, because you're going to be puzzled. You, I wonder what that's going on. No, it's just that we need to know. Mm -hmm. Don't kid yourself. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Create a short life, heart attack, strokes, stressed out. Mm -hmm. Oh, she been gone about two hours, man. Wondering. Oh, what in the world? I know, I saw the way that guy was looking at it. Are y'all still with me? Are this real life, y'all? And you stand home, you stand at home, and you're dying all the time because you stress yourself out because blood pressure is shot way up. Because you're wondering, thinking, not knowing what's going on, but you're thinking something's going on, and the enemy just getting right square and right up in it. And telling you, yeah, old Jack got you there, boy. Yeah, you home. She's been gone for two hours then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jack got you. And you can't have a, oh, you can't rest. Mm. Every time, well, baby, I got to run to the store for a minute. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, make sure that don't take about 20 minutes now to get down to that store and get what you got to get. Come on back now. Here is she two hours later. Oh, my goodness. Scratching <laughs> head. There you go back there, bro. Scratching your head and everything else, wondering what in the world is going on now. And the devil get right square up in it. Before you know it, guess what? You be lying on the floor. She get back because they would have... Hold your heart and you well, well, take the last breath, worry about where she been. Mm. And y'all y'all better wake up. This is not what life is all about. We need to get real with life and give life to the utmost and give it to the fullest and to the fullness of life yes, that God has given unto us to live and stop chasing behind something that's gonna destroy you. That's right. Absolutely. You preaching. Run behind something that's going to destroy you, going to tear you down, cause you to have a heart attack, stroke, and everything, high blood pressure, debilitate you. You preach it. Uh. Run behind Christ. Yes. And watch how blessed you get. Yes. Everything will be fulfilled. Somebody shout yes, I'm yes. you. Brought up in the word, stay in the word. Yes. Don't get caught up in the world. If you're brought up in the world, stay in the world. Don't get caught up in the world. And don't try to change the world by putting an L in it to bring forth lusting out of the flesh, lusting with the eyes and the pride of life. Somebody shout yes over yes. here and give God some praise and glory. Hallelujah. Yes. If you're brought up in the world, stay in the world. In it. You're preaching, don't man. try to change it. You're preaching. Don't try to distort it. And don't refrain from it. That's right. That's right. There's life and your in life, my life, is in the word. It's in the yeah. word. Not the world. The word. The word. This world will be destroyed. Yeah. Don't get caught up in it. Because you Jesus. will also be destroyed with it. Ooh, my God. The word shall not pass 
away. Can I get a witness? I want y'all to hold it up. If you got a real Bible in your hands, hold it up and say, this word, this word will not, will not pass, away. pass away. Heaven and earth, Heaven and earth shall, pass away. shall pass away. This word, this word. Of God, of God, shall not, shall not, will not, will not, cannot, cannot pass away, pass away, because eternal life, because eternal life is in this word, is in that word, it's in the book, it's in the book, it's in the book, it's in the book, it's in the word, it's in the word, it's in the word. There's spirit in the word. There's life in the word. There's truth in the word. Just don't try to put the L in it. You're trying to change it. Nothing Jesus. shall be added Jesus. to it. Jesus. Yes, Lord, Nothing shall be taken away. Yes, Lord, my God. It's the only thing that we have in a sin sick world that is right, that is true, yes, Lord. that is of the law. It's the word. It's the word. Can I get a witness? Yes, Lord. If you're brought up in it, stay in it. Amen. Do it. Don't get caught up in the world. And don't try to change the word. Because if you add to it, amen, all, all of these plagues that's in this Bible will be added unto your life. And if you take away from it, the tree of life and all of God's promises and everything that it is will be taken away from you. Don't try to put an L in it and don't try to take nothing out of it that belongs in it. And if you just so divide it, rightly divide the word of truth. Rightly divide it by allowing it to remain exactly what it is. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Ah, yes. Tight but right. Yes, Lord. The word of God is true. Yes. Let every man be alive. The word of God is true. Thank you.